Welcome back, everybody, to Volatility Trading Strategies. So as we continue on with part seven of the Volatility Lingo series today, you're really going to want to pay attention to this video because we're going to be talking about beta. Now, I'm not exaggerating when I say I really don't know how anybody could be a successful investor without understanding beta and learning how to use it to construct a stronger, diversified portfolio. And that applies just as much whether you're mostly a buy and hold investor or whether you're tactical and moving in and out of the best positions at the time, like we do here at VTS. Regardless of what kind of investor you are, beta is going to be a key tool in your success going forward. So let's talk about what it is, how to calculate it, and then how to apply it to your trading. And as always, if you want to jump on board and join us here at VTS, there's a link in the description with a free trial for anybody who's interested. You'll see the daily email, the volatility dashboard, and all the live trade signals to see if it's right for your long-term investing goals. So first we have to define what beta is and how to interpret it because there's a lot of useful information in that value. So beta is a measure of the volatility of one security in relation to another security. Essentially, it's how much something moves in relation to something else. It's typically measured against the stock market, but it can be other things as well. So an example for volatility traders, we can calculate the beta factor of the UVXY, a very popular volatility ETP, and measure that against the S&P 500 to see how much the UVXY moves in relation to the S&P 500. Now I'll show you the UVXY beta calculation in an Excel spreadsheet in a minute here. It's very easy to do, but first we need to know how to interpret the beta value, and it's giving us information on two important variables. First is the direction. Positive beta values mean the two securities move in the same direction. So an example of this, over the last 15 years, the utilities ETF called VPU has a beta factor to the S&P 500 of 0.65. This is a positive number, which means that utilities and the S&P 500 tend to move in the same direction. Utilities are a sector component of the S&P 500, so that does make sense, of course. But when the S&P 500 goes up, the VPU also tends to go up. When the S&P 500 goes down, utilities tend to go down as well. Now, not always, of course. Day to day, they can deviate from their beta, but longer term, that's the tendency. Negative beta values mean the two securities move in the opposite direction. An example of this, the 20-year U.S. Treasury ETF called TLT has a beta factor to the S&P 500 of minus 0.28. Now it's a negative number, which means that long term, when one of the securities goes up, the other one tends to go down. And vice versa, when the S&P 500 goes down, treasuries tend to go up. Now, of course, with interest rates near all-time lows and the Fed strongly suggesting they're going to start hiking rates soon, we'll see if this still holds true going forward. But long-term, there is a negative beta factor between stocks and bonds, meaning they tend to move in the opposite direction. So direction is the first thing that beta tells us. Positive or negative values is going to determine whether the securities tend to move in the same direction or in the opposite direction. But there is another variable that beta tells us, and that's magnitude. Beta values greater than one means the security has a higher volatility than the comparison security. Essentially, it moves more. For an example, look no further than Tesla stock. Tesla has a five-year beta factor to the S&P 500 of 2.05. That means that on average, long-term, Tesla has about double the volatility of the S&P 500. Beta values less than one means the security has lower volatility than the comparison security. An example of a lower beta security would be Coca-Cola, with a five-year beta to the S&P 500 of 0.66. Because it's less than one, it tends to have lower volatility. And it is important to note here, when viewing beta as magnitude, the positive or negative is ignored. So remember from before, we said the 20-year U.S. Treasury TLT has a beta of minus 0.28. If we're interested in viewing the magnitude of the volatility, we ignore the minus sign. 0.28 is smaller than 1, so it means the TLT has lower volatility than the S&P 500. Magnitude applies on both positive and negative values. So direction and magnitude, that beta factor gives us a lot of useful information on how securities move in relation to the market. So hopefully it's becoming obvious how you could use this to construct a stronger portfolio. But it's also very useful for trying to determine how leveraged a position you currently hold actually is. And the UVXY is a great example of this. A lot of traders out there get themselves into trouble because they don't realize just how much volatility it actually has and how badly it can go if you get that direction wrong. 
So here we are inside an Excel spreadsheet. And first of all, I'm gonna show you how to calculate beta, and then I'll say a few words afterwards about the UVXY itself. So of course, everything starts with the data. You're gonna need the UVXY, and then you're also gonna need the S&P 500 going back as far as you wanna measure. Now I will say that even though the UVXY officially launched in October 2011, since it is based entirely off the VIX futures, which launched in 2004, we can simulate the UVXY going all the way back to March 26th of 2004. And we also have to note that when it did officially launch, it was a two times leverage factor, nearly identical to the old TVIX, if you remember that one. But in February 2000. 2018, during the big Volpocalypse crash where we lost the XIV, UVXY also deleveraged from 2 times to 1.5 times. So I've dragged back the simulation using a 1.5 times leverage factor all the way to 2004. So what you see here is the entire 17 year period reflecting what the UVXY would have been had it been 1.5 times leverage the entire time. All right, so to calculate beta, there's actually three ways to do this. Now, the first is you could use a covariance formula, but I don't imagine anybody's actually gonna wanna do that, so I'm just gonna skip that one. The second is if you go in the data tab and you actually do have your analysis tools downloaded, you can do a regression through that, and it'll actually give you some useful information as well, so maybe in a future video I'll show that one. But today, since all we really need is the beta factor, that couldn't be any easier because all beta is is the slope of a line through a regression of data points. And the data points we're looking at are the daily returns of UVXY and the S&P 500, the SPX. Now, I don't want to make you dizzy scrolling through all of this, so just note that the final cell is 4515. That takes us all the way down through February of 2021. So to calculate this, it's actually very simple. You just do equals and then slope for the slope function, and we're doing UVXY versus SPX, so we're gonna do the UVXY daily values first, adjust that for 4515, going all the way down to the current date, a comma, and then the same thing for the SPX daily values. Again, go to 4515, and that's it, hit enter, and there's our beta factor right there. So UVXY at a 1.5 times leverage factor has a beta to the S&P 500 over the last 17 years of minus 3.76. Remember, we know what that number means. Because it's a negative value, it means that the UVXY tends to move in the opposite direction of the S&P 500. When the S&P 500 is moving up, the UVXY tends to bleed down. When the stock market is crashing, that's when the UVXY tends to spike. And secondly, because it's a large number, 3.76, it means that it's highly leveraged as far as volatility goes. And that's using the 1.5 times leverage these days. Back when it was a two times product, that beta factor was closer to five. Now this video isn't about UVXY specifically, but there is one interesting thing here before we shift the talk and show you how to use beta in your own portfolio. If I go over to this last chart really quick, we can see that the rolling 10-year beta for UVXY to the S&P 500 is now minus 4.72. This is a constant 10-year rolling window. And it means that in the last 10 years, the UVXY is even more volatile than it was in the full 17-year period. During Volpocalypse in Q4 2018, during the pandemic in 2020, UVXY was moving well outside of the longer-term beta and nearly hit minus six at an all-time low there. So just remember, if you do have a very reliable system of trading volatility, there may be some potential rewards there. But on the flip side, if you do get it wrong, even a little bit, there could be some devastating losses waiting as well. And unfortunately, that tends to be the experience of most people who try. These are complicated and dangerous products for retail traders to be using. They're highly leveraged, so please be careful. All right, so there's several ways that you can use beta factor in your own portfolio, but I'll give you an example using three of my tactical strategies. The defensive rotation strategy will be tactically rotating between positions in either the NASDAQ index, bonds, utilities, or cash based on market conditions. The tactical balance strategy has the potential for either stocks, bonds, or gold, which we've been holding gold for a while recently with this latest market crash. And then strategic tail risk can rotate between stocks or real estate during relatively stable markets, but also long volatility to take advantage of periods with elevated risk and uncertainty. Understanding how each of those positions move in relation to both each other and the S&P 500, it's very useful for me when I'm trying to combine them into an effective diversified portfolio. I need to know what my portfolio is likely gonna look like in different volatility regimes, so I can calculate my expected outcomes as accurately as possible. When I am net short the market, for example, 
example, like I have been recently, I need to know by how much. Am I net short double the market? A minus two beta factor? I definitely don't want that much exposure. Markets don't crash very often. So it's very helpful for me to know that I'm currently net short about minus 0.32 the market. If stocks do go down 50 or 60% in a recession, I know I'm going to have some great results. But without calculating it, how would I ever get that calibration right? I don't want to overdo it or underdo it and then be surprised by the outcome. So for me, I think it's absolutely vital to actually go through all those calculations. Beta factor is great because it tells us both magnitude and direction. And then I can just start piecing everything together and build the best portfolio for each different volatility regime. So if you want to see some of my live trades and how the portfolio actually moves in and out of those positions, down in the description below, there's a link for a free trial to VTS. You can check it out with no obligation. Come see if the VTS community is right for your long-term investing goals. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching the video. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and go check out my website right here. There's tons of articles and videos on there, as well as a free trial to join the VTS investing community. What have you got to lose? Come see how I personally navigate these unruly markets. See you next time.